Hello and welcome back to the Wasteland, everybody. Welcome back to Fallout New Vegas, where we have another tier list here. This one is going to be for all of the extra perks in the game, not counting the unarmed perks. I didn't put them in here because they felt a little bit strange, and also not counting the companion perks. I'm going to save that for its own separate list that we'll do later on. Right now, these are all the earnable perks or buyable perks that you can actually get throughout the game. For our tiers, we've got the Big Iron tier, which just needs to be up there. Nuka Cola tier, so pretty good. Nice to have. C tier, and then the what tier, which is just kind of like, does this perk actually help? Does it do anything? There are a couple perks here that are just kind of odd, or that you're probably not going to get, so they're going to end up there. Now let's go through these and go over what you need to do to get each of these. So, the very first one we've got is Abominable, and this one you get from killing so many abominations throughout the wasteland. You get this for killing 50, 100, and 150 abominations. So the abominations are alien centaurs, death claws, ghost people, Mr. House, weirdly enough, the night stalkers, the spore carriers, the spore plants, the think tank, again, weirdly enough, and the tunnelers. And that's everything that counts as a abomination for this particular perk. For each level of this perk, you get 3, 6, and 10% more damage towards that type of enemy. Having 10% more damage towards Death Claws is going to be nice. The same thing goes with like 10% extra damage towards Tunnelers. The main issue with this one is just getting it, because there's not a whole ton of abominations throughout the wasteland, unless you're okay with just saving, waiting a little while, and then respawning in like Death Claws or any of those other enemies that we talked about besides the ones that you can't, like Mr. House or the Think Tank. Unless you're willing to do console commands, and then I guess you could. So Abominable is okay, and I would say it's nice to have. Again, Death Claws are really what's carrying this and Tunnelers. Night Stalkers too. Night Stalkers are probably going to be the easiest thing to farm for this or Death Claws if you actually want to get it all the way maxed out. Our next one is Animal Control. You get this one from killing so many mutated animals. So this is 50, 100, and 150 the same way as Abominable was. This one is going to be a little bit easier, even though there's not a whole lot of scary animals in this game, but it's just going to be easier to farm this because this counts for geckos, big rats, brahmin, big horners, lake larks, and mole rats, and this also goes up to 10% more damage at max. That's okay, that's not anything too crazy, but it's also not anything that's real scary there. Lake larks are about the scariest thing that were named. I don't know if this counts for Yaogwais. If it does, then that does make this one a little bit better. But uh, as it is, I'm going to put this one in also nice to have. It, you're probably going to get this one much easier than you will get Abominable. But it's, it's not, you know, Big Horners and Brahmin are not the scariest thing in the wasteland. Next one we have is Beautiful Beatdown. This one you get from completing the Fistful of Haulers by inflicting 10,000 unarmed damage to any sort of enemy. This doesn't need to be done in all one hit. This will be done over the course of it. And if you're using unarmed, you're probably going to get this one. And this one's pretty cool. This one does only have one rank but it makes it so every unarmed attack in VATS is reduced by 10%, so you don't use as much action points. That one's really good, especially if you're using unarmed, because unarmed already usually has pretty good VATS attacks. It has good action point costs, making them even better is just that much more of a bonus. So I would put Beautiful Beat Down into the Big Iron tier, because I think it belongs there, at least if you're going with a dedicated unarmed build. If you're not, then you're probably not going to get this, and it will go down to, like, the what tier. Bug Stomper is the same as the other ones that we've talked about, like Animal Control, where you get 10% more damage at its max rank against mutated insects. Bugs are pretty common in the Wasteland, and this one you're probably going to get at least a couple ranks into pretty quick, and it does help quite a bit because Cazadors are really annoying to fight, especially early on. You can farm things like um, ants or rad roaches or really anything if you want to get this. Rad scorpions aren't a bad thing to farm either because there's quite a few of them. Then you can go kill Cazadors easier. So the Bug Stomper, I would say, is honestly better than these ones. And I'd put it up into the Nuka Cola tier. It's also just maybe a little bit easier to get. And it's really just like getting rid of those Cazadors early on. It, it helps. It's not like Abominable where it's difficult to actually farm mutated abominations and you're not going to get it up that quick, so fighting the Death Claws, once you have it leveled up, is awesome, but before that, it's not as good, whereas Bug Stomp, you can level up immediately, and then actually kill, like, Cazadors with it, so I'd put it, like, one tier above that. Then we've got Camel of the Mojave. Camel of the Mojave is drink 100 water items. This is, like, purified water or dirty water, or a couple other waters. This makes so water items hydrate you more and heal you more. That's good to have. Water is a decent thing for actually healing, it's not one of the best, like the Sunset Sarsaparillas are really good in the early game. 
And if you're into the late game, you could have them's good eating, which like the blood sausages and the thin red paste is even better. But this is nice, especially if you're playing on like the survival mode. On survival mode, I would say this one's nice to have. On the standard mode, I'd probably put this C tier because healing from water does help, but it doesn't help that much by the time you're probably getting this. On survival mode, I would say it's in the nice to have tier just because like the hydration is nice. So you don't have to be drinking as often. Although that's usually not a huge issue, it just makes it so supplies go a little bit further and you have to worry about it less. Then we have Day Tripper. Day Tripper makes it so you have to take 25 addictive chems, and you can do this with all sorts of different chems. Uh, alcohol also counts towards this, so it's really easy just to drink a bunch of it right at the very start and get this one right away. And this one makes it so the effects of addictive chems last 33% longer. This one's really good. I'm going to put that up into the big iron tier because you have, like, you just take this with a bunch of alcohol right at the very start of the game get this one right away, get your addiction cured. And then anytime that you need to pop any sort of uh, meds, you can right away and it will help you. Medex lasts longer, Psycho lasts longer, Jet lasts longer, Turbo lasts longer. All of those are really nice to have. On most builds, uh, Buff Out can also last a little bit longer. So Day Tripper is a very easy one to get and it's a very strong one to get. And then we have Dine and Dash. This one you can only get with the Cannibal perk. <laughs> So you have to eat 25 corpses in order to get this one. And then it makes it so whenever you interact with the body, you have an option of taking human remains, which you can also eat later. Uh, Cannibal is already not a great perk. It's a great perk if you want to do role playing purposes. But if you're actually like trying to, I guess, go through the game the most efficiently as possible, Cannibal is not really going to be a perk that you're going to consider. Just having more human remains is honestly not that good either. I'd put this one in like the what tier. I just, I don't really see it being that useful, even in a cannibal character, unless you're just trying to be a cannibal and you're playing on the survival mode, you can't eat anything else besides human remains. In which case then, yeah, maybe Dine and Dash would actually be pretty useful then. <laughs> then we have Fast Times. Fast Times is use 20 turbo and this gets you an additional 50% more to turbo. That's really good. I'm actually going to put this into the Nuka Cola tier because honestly I don't get this one very much because there's not a whole lot of turbo to actually be picked up around the map. You can buy some from certain vendors, the great cons, they tend to sell it a decent amount and you can actually get the recipe to make it, which will make this one a lot easier to actually get. And having more turbo stacks is really, really strong. But I honestly don't find myself getting this one that much just because of the amount of turbo you have to use. You could disagree with this and put it up in the big iron and I would totally understand that because if you are making turbo, then this one goes a lot faster. This one also doesn't really count towards like the implant GRX. So usually by the time I have that, I'm just not using turbo anymore. And stacking that plus chemist is just one of the strongest combos in the game. That's not to say turbo isn't also one of the strongest items in the game because it absolutely is. But it's just like getting this one is a little bit more difficult for me. And that's why I put it one tier below big iron. However, if you can get it early, then yeah, I'd put it up in like the big iron tier. Free Radical, you have to use right away 20 times, which isn't too hard because you could just use this so long as you have any level of radiation. And this one makes so you remove an additional 10 rads anytime that you use right away. That's pretty nice. Um, it's nothing crazy. So I'm going to put it into the C tier because 10 extra rads usually doesn't matter that much. And if you use right away that often, you're probably into the mid to late game, so you can buy more of it. You probably have a decent amount of it stocked up and it's not as useful, but it is still a bonus. So it's uh, it's C tier. Friendly help can only be obtained by either having one of two perks. You either need Misfortune or the Mysterious Stranger, and they have to appear 15 times in order for you to get this. Once those have appeared 15 times, then they are twice as likely to appear during VATS. That's kind of nice. I don't think Misfortune or the Mysterious Stranger is really that great of a perk even for a VATS build, but it is a bonus. And let's say you're doing like a companion only run or something like that, and you're counting the Mysterious Stranger and Misfortune towards it. This one could be useful, but I think I'll put Friendly Help into C tier. It's fine, but nothing way crazy. Then we've got Lord Death. This one's probably like one of the easiest perks to get in the game, at least if you're not doing a pacifist run. And this one is just kill things. You have to kill 200, 700, or 1,000 enemies in order to get this. And this gets you 1, 2, and 4% more damage towards everything. I'm going to put Lord Death up into the big iron tier because you're probably going to get it fairly early on. Killing 1,000 things is not that difficult in New Vegas. And once you do, 4% more damage is 4% more damage for everything. doesn't matter what build you're running and unless, again, you're using a pacifist build, in which case you're never going to get this perk. But on any other build, you can get it fairly easy. Machine Head makes it so whenever you kill robots, then you get more damage towards robots. There's supposed to be three ranks to this one too, but only the first two actually work. 
which is weird. And this gets you 3 and 6% more damage towards robots. You have to kill 50 and 100 robots. The problem with this is there's just not very many robots in New Vegas. There's not a whole lot of places you could actually go and farm this. The best place would be to go to Big Mountain and kill the robots there. And then just wait for like the rads or wait for the uh, robo scorpions to respawn and then just keep killing them. So this one is okay. I'm going to put it into like C tier. It's on the very low end of C tier. It's mostly just held up because Big Mountain exists. If Big Mountain wasn't a thing, then this one would probably just go into the what tier because there's just not enough robots to make use of it unless you're just killing everything. And even then, like there's still not a whole lot of places where you can kill robots easily. Then we have the Meat of Champions. This one you can only obtain by having the cannibal perk and you have to eat four different people in order to do this, named people. You have to eat Mr. House, Caesar, the King, and Aaron Campbell. So you can't be with NCR, you can't be with the Legion, at, at least normally. Maybe you can if you disguise yourself and then kill them and then eat them. This could work. You can't be with Mr. House because he's needed to actually continue the quest. So maybe you can actually still go with the NCR or with Caesar's Legion. Well, no, because most of it's through Caesar. You could probably still go with the NCR or uh, Yes Man, and those are going to be like your end game options. What this does though is after you've eaten all of those characters, then whenever you do eat a, another character, for the next minute after that, you get plus one luck, plus one strength, plus one charisma, plus one intelligence, and that's it. Again, if you're actually going with like a regular serious build, you're probably not going to get the meat of champions. But it is a really awesome perk to have in the game, and I really do enjoy it. So I'm going to actually go ahead and put this into the Nuka-Cola tier. I can't bring myself to put it to the Big Iron tier. It's Big Iron in terms of theme. The theme of it is absolutely awesome. In terms of practical use, it's definitely like in the what tier. Having an extra minute of plus one to not even all of your special stats, but most of your special stats isn't really that crazy. Uh, there's a lot of other things that could do something similar to that. A lot of chems can do something similar to that if you just wanted to stack them. Meat of Champions isn't like amazing, but it, it is kind of a funny meme perk. So I'm going to put it up there just because I respect it so much. And then we've got Melee Hacker. So Melee Hacker actually has three conditions on it to get each rank of it. The first condition that counts towards both these is kill 125 enemies with Melee. Then the second condition is deal 10,000 damage with one-handed Melee. And the third condition is deal 10,000 damage with two-handed melee. That's really not that hard if you're doing a melee build. You're probably going to kill that many things, and you're probably going to be switching between one and two-handed weapons because there is a lot of good both. Chance's knife is amazing at the very start of the game, and then you could go for something like Oh Baby or Knock Knock towards the end of the game and be able to get this super, super fast. What this does, though, is each rank of this, you can get two ranks, gives you 5% more melee weapon attack speed. That's really good. Melee weapons love attack speed, especially if you stack multiple attack speed buffs on this. So you stack this, you stack Slayer, you stack like uh, Slasher on top of this, or Rushing Water, sorry. Slasher would also be a good option, but Rushing Water on top of this to get you even more damage and you just flail out in front of you and just everything dies. It kills stuff super quick and this helps that build be even more crazy. So melee hacker going up to the big iron tier. All right, our next one is Mutant Massacre. Mutant Massacre is just the same as these other ones where you get 10% more damage at its max rank for killing so many mutants. Which this one also seems good, but it's probably going to go into the what tier because there's just not enough mutants for you to actually farm this effectively unless you're just farming Big Mountain to kill mutants and get their gear. But at that point, you could probably kill mutants pretty effectively and killing them 10% faster doesn't really matter. There's just not a whole lot of places to farm mutants. Uh, this is specifically super mutants um, and nightkin. They both count towards this. But anything else, any mutated creature does not count towards the mutant massacre. And we have power armor training. This is once you complete a quest. There's actually several quests that give you this, but it makes it so you can wear all power armor. Power armor is pretty good. Power armor is pretty awesome, especially if you're going to the tank build. So if you're going like tank melee, pretty awesome. Tank explosives, pretty awesome. If you're not doing tank build, you're doing like sniper build, it can still be pretty decent. So I guess I'd put power armor training up into the big iron tier because it's really nice to have, although not entirely necessary. So I could see this one being shuffled around depending on your armor preference because light and medium armors are actually really good in this game too. And then we have set lasers to fun. This is deal so much damage with laser pistols and then deal so much damage with laser rifles. This is 16,000 damage with laser pistols and then 25,000 damage with laser rifles. 
and both these get you extra crit chance. 2% extra crit chance with all energy weapons. Having 4% extra crit chance on energy weapons is really awesome. There's a lot of energy weapons that can take advantage of this. The Gatling laser loves crits with it. The laser rifles love crits. The plasma rifles love crits. The LAER, basically everything loves crits that's in an energy weapon besides like a handful of them. Flamethrowers don't really care about it, but even then you're still getting a bonus. So set laser to fun right up into the big iron tier. Very nice to have if you're going with an energy weapon build. And then our last earnable perk or challenge perk in the base game is called Tough Guy. This one you can get from crippling your limbs 50 times. You can do this to yourself or it can just happen to you. And then once you get this, it makes it so you take 25% less limb damage. You can actually get this really easy in certain areas where you can just keep like falling off of things and breaking your legs or you can blow yourself up with explosives. It's particularly easy if you run to the divide early and grab like the red glare and just shoot it at your feet because it doesn't do that much friendly fire damage, but it does a lot of limb crippling damage. And if you were to take the small frame trade at the very start, this one can just completely negate it, which is pretty awesome. So tough guy, pretty good, unless you're going with like, well, even with adamantium skeleton, this does stack. So it, even then it's still pretty good. I'd put this one up into the new Coca-Cola tier. It's really nice to have, not entirely necessary. Does help even more on like the survival mode where breaking your limbs is a lot worse. In the regular mode, it doesn't really matter. You can just stick yourself with stim packs, in which case in this one would probably be just like nice to have. But on survival mode, I would say it's better because you don't get that option. You either have to go to a doctor to fix your limbs or you have to have a doctor's bag, which are kind of rare or kind of expensive, especially at the start. Up next, we have the implant perks. These ones you can just buy at the New Vegas Clinic and these can be put into your body. This does depend on how much endurance you have though. The amount of endurance you have is the amount of implants that you can get. There's seven implants that count for the special perks. This would be strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. And then there is an additional two implants that you can get, which are the subdermal armor and the monocyte breeder, which you would need an additional two endurance. So you need to have nine endurance if you want to get all of these. However, if you're not planning on getting all of these, then that amount would be needed less. So first up, we have the special implants. This is just covering all of them. And I would say that this one goes up to the big iron tier. I didn't want to have them each individually because some are some are better than others. Some aren't as good. It also depends on the build that you're going for as to which ones you want to prioritize over others. Strength is pretty good because it counts for weapon handling skill and total weight as well as it's good for unarmed and melee. Perception is kind of a dump stat, but it's useful for certain perks. Endurance just makes you tankier and allows you to have all the implants. Charisma, also kind of a dump stat unless you're going with like a companions only build or something, or you really like companions and you're trying to build them up. Intelligence is always nice to have because it just gets you more skill points. Agility is really nice for the action points. It works really well on almost any like damaging build. And then luck is nice to have just for like gambling at casinos and getting more crit chance for most builds, which really like crits. So it's kind of a mixed bag of which implants are the best to get. But if you go with nine endurance, you don't even need to make that choice. You can just take them all and have extra points just because of that, which is always cool. Subdermal armor is pretty good too. This gives you four damage threshold when you take it. This is really nice to have too. I would say that this one is also going to the big iron tier. Having four more endurance is more than certain light armors have. Uh, it's better than almost any clothing has as well and just getting more damage resist to take less damage is going to be nice on any build unless you're doing like a no hit run or something like that which I don't know if anybody actually does that with New Vegas because there's just so many times when you could just take random amounts of damage in this game for no reason. Then we have the Monocyte Breeder. The Monocyte Breeder makes it so you regenerate 1 HP for every 10 seconds. This one I would say is like the nice to have one. It's really not that necessary. It's kind of fun if you want to stack this with more regeneration perks though. If you want to stack this with solar powered, if you want to stack it with the power armor that makes it so you can regenerate quicker or rad child. And just having passive health regeneration is kind of nice. You're just going to be using up less healing overall. So even if it's just a couple of points that you're getting from this, it's still a bonus. So I would say it's nice to have. It is very expensive though. It's more expensive than the other ones, and I wouldn't say it's as useful as like subdermal armor. And then we've got five perks from Dead Money that you can earn during the course of Dead Money. First up, we have Coin Operator. This one is complete dialogue with Christine. That makes it so you can make the Sierra Madre chips. That's kind of cool. It definitely helps during the DLC if you want to be buying certain things. It can help afterward if you're impatient and you don't want to wait as much. Coin Operator, I would say, is like is C tier at best. Then we've got Ghost Hunter. Ghost Hunter you get from talking with Dog, and this makes it so you are more likely to dismember the ghost people. This one sounds pretty good, but if you know how to dismember the ghost people by just like equipping the uh, bear trap fist, 
it's really not that hard. If you want to make dead money super, super simple, go and do the divide first, get Rar's uh, hand, and then make the fist of Rar, and you can just walk right through that DLC super easy, even more so if you're going with a melee or an unarmed build, because you just shred through everything then. That is kind of useful, but this only works on the Ghost Hunters, and the Ghost Hunters are only in the Sierra Madre, and they're not always around. So I'd put this one into the question mark tier. It's just not really that great. Then we've got the Sierra Madre Martini. You get this from talking to Dean Domino, and this gives you the recipe to make the Sierra Madre Martinis, which are an excellent source of health during Dead Money. They're okay after that too, because they do have a lot of endurance and the passive health bonus that they just give you is really nice. They're also not very hard to make. This one I would say is a bit better. I'd put it into C tier. It's still not crazy though. If you're going like to the Dead Money DLC and you want an even easier time than what I said by taking Rar's hand, go with Them's Good Eating as a perk. It's one of the best perks in the game in my opinion, where it just makes so any living thing has a chance of dropping blood sausages or thin red paste, and those two are like two of the best health items and two of the best money making items in the whole game. Then we have Elijah's Last Words. This one you only get from giving the Elijah's message to Veronica after this, and this actually boosts up Veronica. It gives her 150% more damage, as well as an increased 25% chance to knock down enemies. Veronica is already one of the strongest companions that you can have, so having this on top of it makes her absolutely busted, even more so if you want to put like greased lightning on her, and she just wails on everything super, super fast. So this one can be like absolutely big iron tier, but it's big iron for your companion, not for yourself. You, you don't actually get any bonus from this, but Veronica is definitely going to love this. Then there's Elijah's Rambling, which this one you keep from Veronica, but it does get her bonuses. This gets her an additional 50% more crit damage. It's supposed to give her 150%, but that's just incorrect. It's actually just 50% bonus. This one is still really good. I don't think it's as good as just her having faster attack speed and knocking enemies down. That is really crazy. Her hitting crits can kill certain enemies faster, but if she can knock everything down, it's not getting up before she can kill it. So I would put this one into like the... Uh, Nuka Cola tier. It's still pretty good for her. Not as good as Elijah's last words though. Then we have all of the lobotomite perks that you get in Old World Blues. These are all, well, these three you get at the very start of showing up to Old World Blues because you get your brain, heart, and spine ripped out of you and put synthetic ones in. First up, we got Brainless. This one, you can actually keep these two afterwards if you want to, but this one makes it so your head can no longer be crippled. That's pretty nice. Having your head crippled is really annoying. It just makes everything slow down and you get like the concussive effect, which just it is not good. You also get an additional 25% chem resist to like addiction. So this one's actually pretty decent. It's nice to have. Not having a crippled head is awesome. I would put this one up into like the new Coca-Cola tier. Being brainless is actually pretty good. Being heartless, on the other hand, makes it so you're immune to poison, which is kind of nice. There's not a whole lot of enemies that do poison you, but it's cool to have. You also have minus 50% chance of getting crit hit by robots, and you get sometimes lesser healing from certain items. The items that heal you aren't really that big of a deal. This one is pretty decent though. Robots not crit hitting you doesn't matter so much. It does help in Old World Blues, but outside of that, it's probably not really going to help you that much. Poison immunity is okay too. I would say Heartless is like nice to have, but it's not nearly as good as being Brainless. Spineless makes it so you get plus one strength, which is really cool. This counts as temporary strength, not as a permanent strength buff. I think just because it can be swapped in and out with between the reinforced spine and being spineless, this gives you one damage threshold. That's pretty good. And it also makes it so your torso can't be crippled anymore. Having your torso crippled can also be kind of annoying because if enemies hit it, there's more of a chance that you're going to stagger and fall backward. And that's just not good to have, especially against melee enemies where they'll just keep beating up on you and probably trigger this multiple times. So spineless can actually be really good. I'm going to put it right up in new Coca-Cola tier with the brainless. Both those are really nice. Then we've got the uh, opposite of these. Once you get your old brain, your old heart and your old spine back in, or I guess all of your advanced versions of these. So you got big brain, which is actually uh, not functioning. It doesn't give you anything at all. It's supposed to actually give you just more bonuses than something like Brainless would, where you're supposed to also have your head not being able to be crippled, give you 10 more addiction percent uh, resist, and then give you 10% more damage threshold for one minute after using chems, but it just, it doesn't work. So this one's going into the question mark. It's better to go with Brainless than it is to be big brained, because being big brained actually doesn't help you in this game because it doesn't work right. 
Then we have the Cardiac Arrest. This is getting your old heart back. This gives you a 50% resist towards poison, which is nice. Gives you a minus 25% chance from crit hits from robots, and it gives you more healing from certain healing items. This one I would say is like on par with being heartless. It's fine to have. You'd pick whichever one you'd like. If you don't like poison, then go with heartless. If you don't care about poison and you want better healing, go with the Cardiac Arrest. That's uh, really all that it comes down to. They're both okay. And then we've got Reinforced Spine, which is probably my favorite of the bunch. This one gives you plus two strength on it, which is awesome. You don't need to have any more than seven strength in this game to max out your strength because you go seven strength, you get plus one from the special implant. So it goes up to eight strength and then you get Reinforced Spine. You go right up into 10 strength. You don't need to stack anything more than that. It's fantastic for a melee or an unarmed build. It's also really good if you want to be using big heavy weapons too, or just carry it around more stuff if you're a loot goblin. On top of that, it also gives you two damage threshold, which is pretty cool too. So I'd put Reinforced Spine all the way up into S tier. I mean, it kind of sucks that you lose the ability to not have like your torso crippled, but I feel like giving up that to get one more strength and one more damage threshold is worth it enough for me, so I think it's like my favorite one of those. Then we have DNA Agent. This one you get from completing the X8 facility, and this one makes it so you get 10% more damage towards Night Stalkers. That's pretty nice. I'm gonna put that up into the Nuka Cola tier because Night Stalkers are kind of scary. So having more damage towards them and killing them a little bit quicker, pretty good. Then we've got DNA Avenger. You can actually get this one three times rather than just one like the other. This is kill Cazadors around Big Mountain. You do have to kind of farm this one because there's not enough Cazadors to kill normally for you to actually get all three ranks of this. So you're gonna have to wait a couple days to get it, like to have some of them spawn outside and then kill them again. This makes so you get 10% more damage towards Cazadors per level. So you can have up to 30% more damage towards Cazadors. That's pretty awesome. I'm gonna put that up in the new Coca-Cola too. Cazadors aren't really the scariest enemy once you know how to fight them and once you have weapons that are really good at fighting them. Like just anything that's automatic that can cripple their wings super fast kills them really quickly. Even so, they are still very scary. They move really fast, they hit really hard, they can poison you, they can hit multiple times quickly. So just killing them quicker is really, really nice. And then for our last of our special perks in Big Mountain, there's still the implants that we need to talk about. We have the Stealth Suit Mark II perk which makes so if you complete the last challenge of the stealth suit, you're supposed to have 20% increased sneak speed. That doesn't actually work though. That doesn't help this one. So this is gonna go into the what tier because it's another perk that just is broken and doesn't work correctly. I, I'm assuming it's probably just written wrong. Then we've got all the implants that you can also get there at Big Mountain. First one is the implant C13. This one you get for 8,000 caps and this gives you 10% more damage towards Cazadors. So that one's gonna go right up into the new Coca-Cola tier because that one's pretty nice to have. Then you've got the M5. This one costs 10,000, and this makes it so your crouch movement speed is 20% faster. That's actually really nice to have. I'm gonna put that one up into the big iron tier. If you're going with a sneak build, like sniper build, melee or unarmed build, this one's just super nice to have. It's just a, a convenient option. Then we have the implant Y3. This one costs 12,000 caps. This one makes it so it removes any radiation taken from drinking from an irradiated water source. This one's like C tier. This one's whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's technically a bonus and it completely makes it so like lead belly is almost worthless because you can just buy lead belly as an implant, but you're still getting a lead belly and it's just not enough. There's just not a whole lot of areas where you're going to be drinking like irradiated water to where it's going to actually accumulate to be a problem. If it is, then I don't know where the heck you're at and you should probably leave that area or you're like right at the start and you've spent time in an irradiated area and you need to like go to a doctor or get some rat away or something. And then our last one is the implant Y7. This one costs 20,000 caps in order to get, but this one gives you plus five health and two restored action points through consumption of food. That's nice to have. Um, it's not as crazy as like some of these other ones. Like the, the crouch speed is just so good. Getting extra damage towards Cazdors is super nice too. This one's a lot and you don't really get a whole lot from it. But if you want to be eating a whole bunch of food and just get your health and action points back, you can do that during a fight. This helps. So not terrible by any means, but nothing way crazy either. And then this brings us to our last six perks, which all of these you can get in the Lonesome Road. A lot of these depend on which ending you decide to take. So our very first one is the Bear Slayer. The Bear Slayer is you launch nukes at the NCR. This gives you plus one special point, which is really nice to have. It makes it so you have Caesar's Legion uh, fame and you get NCR infamy. 
If you're going with the Legion, this is awesome. If you're going with the NCR, don't do this. This one, I guess, goes up into the big iron tier because plus one to your special stat on any special stat is just awesome. And the other effects are just going to affect how you enjoy playing the game or what story you're going with this time. Next one is Dead Man's Burden. This one is launch missiles at both the NCR and Caesar. So again, if you're going with either of these two, don't do this. If you're not going with either room, then this is fine. This gives you plus one special point. It also gives you boomers and powder ganger fame, but Caesar's Legion and NCR infamy. So yeah, again, probably big iron tier because plus one special stat is awesome. Getting boomers fame is okay. Getting powder gangers is whatever. It's just for role playing purposes at that point, whichever side you're going with. If you're going with the yes man, then you know, none of these really matter. Then we've got Scourge of the East. This is launch missiles at Caesar's Legion. So you get NCR fame, Caesar's Legion infamy, plus one special stat. It's the opposite of Bear Slayer. Then you have the Divide Survivor. This one is stop the missiles altogether, so you don't launch the missiles at all. You get plus one special stat to anything that you want. And then you also get Brotherhood and Follower fame, which can also be kind of useful. So I would also put that up there. It also depends on which uh, character you're going with. Each of these also can give you unique weapons too, or unique armors that you can unlock when you bomb the areas, because you can actually go to those areas and they do unlock areas. So like if you want to unlock everything and get everything, then Dead Man's Burden gives you the most of that because you can bomb both sides and get two areas that you can go and explore. Whereas Divide Survivor gives you the least amount. Our other perks are Marked. This is kill three of the named Marked Men. And this makes it so you get 10% more damage towards Marked Men. And you also have 10% more damage threshold towards Marked Men. That's pretty nice because if you're going to the Lonesome Road at the end, the Marked Men are usually the scariest enemy in the game. Or one of them because they can have like 50 cows, they can have brush guns. They can have the assault carbines. They can just shred you really, really fast. Um, some of their melee weapons are really scary too. So having this is pretty good. If you do it early on, this one is less good because they're not going to have crazy weapons then. But still having more damage and damage resist is always going to be good. I'm going to put this one up into the Nuka Cola tier. And then for our very last perk that we have, this one is called Lonesome Road. You get this one from leaving Eddie behind in Ulysses Temple. So you don't get to have Eddie for the final fight, and Eddie is a pretty cool companion. I like Eddie quite a lot, especially in Lonesome Road. You get 10% more damage and 10% better VATS hit chance when you don't have any companions. And that is actually really good. I don't actually like using companions all that much in New Vegas, not because I don't really like them, but usually I'm playing on the very hard, hardcore difficulty. And on hardcore, if any of your companions die then you can't really res them, with a few exceptions. Certain ones just won't die at all, especially with the DLCs and stuff, so it isn't as big of an issue there. But I usually don't actually have companions with me, so actually having this is pretty good. But then again, you have to abandon Eddie. So this one goes both into the what tier and to the big iron tier. If you're okay with not having Eddie, which is kind of sad to say, it goes into the big iron tier. If you're not okay with having Eddie and you're doing like full companion run, then it goes in the what tier. You would never abandon Eddie. And this is where I put all the earnable perks. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below on each of these. How do you enjoy each of them? Where would you put them? And thank you guys so very much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye, everyone.